So today we're going to do normal probabilities using the standard normal or Z table and jump. And we're going to do this using an example that's already in the class notes. So in that example, we know or we're told that the average weight of female huskies is 42 pounds with a standard deviation of 0.67 pounds. And this is based on the breed standard, so if you're interested in huskies, there's a little bit of information for you. Husky weights are also known to follow the normal distribution, and that's not uncommon in nature. So the first thing I like to do when presented with information is this, is go into the problem and find out and dig out the uh, statistical information that's provided. So we're told that we have a normal distribution and that the mean or the average weight of that distribution is 42 pounds. So we can say mu here equals 42 pounds. And we're also told that the standard deviation is 0 0.67 pounds. And again, because this is of the distribution, this is true for all Huskies, this is going to be sigma equals 0 0.67. So these are both population parameters. They're defining what's true in the population of all female huskies. They're defining the parameters for that normal distribution. So if we let x be a random variable, and let that be the weight of a female husky, so x is a random variable, we'll just say the next female husky that you encounter on the street or at the dog park or wherever you are, come over to my house, meet my husky. x is just going to be the weight of the next female husky you encounter, say. So it's a random variable. It's unknown. It's just a placeholder so we don't always have to write weight of a female husky. We can then write, given this information, the distribution, the parameters that are known, that x is distributed normal with some mean mu of 42 pounds and the standard deviation sigma equals 0 0.67 pounds. So again, just to really firm up this notation, x is our continuous random variable. This just means that this is the weight of a female husky. This tilde means follows or is distributed as whatever the following distribution is. So we're to being told that x, our continuous random variable, follows this n normal distribution with these parameter values. And because we're told what those parameters are, besides just some uh, unknown mean and some unknown standard deviation, we put them in. So the mean of this normal distribution is 42 pounds and it's known, and the standard deviation of this distribution is 0 0.67 pounds, and that is also known. So if x, our random variable, is one random selection from a normal population distribution, then we can find probabilities with on x. And we can find a variety of different probabilities. We can find the probability that we are greater than x. We can find the probability that we're less than some specific value x. We can find the probability that x takes on a range. But because x is continuous, for example, because we're talking about weights and weights are continuous, the probability that we get a female husky that weighs exactly some specific value x. So this is a specific value, say 15 pounds or 41 pounds or 43.0002 pounds. The probability that we find a female husky that weighs exactly that value is zero. So recall, this equal sign means exact equals. So how do we find the probabilities that we might be actually interested in, such as those ranges, the probability we get someone greater than a specific value? So here's a sample setup. Sakari, my husky, weighs 2.986 standard deviations less than the average female husky. What is the probability of finding another female husky that weighs less than Sakari? Well, a z-score, if you'll remember our definition of z-scores or standardized values, 
is the number of standard deviations away from the mean an observation lies. So this is the same thing as a standardized value. And since we're told that Sakari is 2.986 standard deviations less than average, this is Sakari's z-score. So z for Sakari is negative 2.986, and it's negative because she is below average in terms of her weight and above average in stubbornness. So what is the probability of finding a husky that weighs less than Sakari? Well, that's the same thing as asking what's the probability of finding a husky with a lower z-score. And so we might draw our normal curve this way just to help us keep straight what we're trying to find. And remember, if we're dealing with z-scores, this is a standard normal variable. So it's going to have a mean of 0 and standard deviation 1. And we're going to put Sakari down here because she has a negative z-score. So if this is my z scale, I'm going to label my axis just to remember which scale I'm on. And I'm going to put her down here at negative 2.986. And I want the probability of anyone down here. So this is the probability of interest. I want any z score that is less than Sakari's, or the probability of finding a husky less than her. So mathematically, I write it this way, the probability they get a z less than negative 2.986. So this is saying, what is the probability to get a random variable from this standard normal distribution that is less than this negative 2.986 that I have observed? So this z is a random variable, and this is a little z is a specific value. So this is keeping with that notation that we've seen before. Now, because I already have this in terms of z-scores, I can use that z-table. This is that normal table that we have on the class website. And we'll see that everything shaded in in this upper left-hand corner is indicating the table entry. These are probabilities. These are probabilities. So all the table entries are less than or cumulative probability. So I'm going to write cumulative probability. So everything in the table is going to tell us the probability we're less than a specific z. So those table entries are everything in the body of the table. And everything that's defining the column and the rows, those are the z-scores. So this cell, this point zero 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 five, is the probability that I'm less than the z-score defined by the intersection of that row and column. <clears throat> so back to our specific problem. Sakari had a z-score, if you'll remember, of negative 2.986. Well, we can see that our z-scores only have ones place, tenths place, and then if we go up to the column, we can add a one hundredths place. So we're going to round this to negative 2.99 just that we have values that we can work with. So this negative 2.99, and we remember we want the probability that we get a z less than this negative 2.99, and those are the values that are provided in the table. So we just need to find 2.99 in terms of a z-score, because this is a z, and we want to find that probably we're less than that z. So we're going to find 2.9, or this negative 2.9, here. And we're going to then go over to that 0 0.09 in our hundredths place. And we're going to end up with 0 0.0014. We get the probability that we have a z-score, or we find a z-random variable less than the current one is 0 0.0014. So this shaded in region on our little plot that we drew is 0 0.0014. That's the area under the curve that is less than negative 2.99.
Say instead we want to find the probability of finding a female husky that weighs more than Sakari. So she weighs pretty quite a bit less than average. What if we want to find a husky that weighs more than her? Well, intuitively you might say, well, if she is that light, it should be pretty easy to find someone that weighs more than her. So first we can say, let's recall that the total area under the area of a curve is 1, and that's just by definition of a probability distribution. Remember that a probability distribution distributes that total or 100% probability across all possible outcomes. And so there's only 100% total area under that curve, or total area of 1 under the curve. So if I were to draw this curve that goes from minus infinity to positive infinity, the entire area under there equals 1. So if this is my z-scale with a mean of 0, and here's Sakari down here at negative 2.986 again, instead of looking to the left, we now want to find all of this area up above her. And we know that everyone down here, or everything down there, is 0 0.0014, because we just found that. But we don't want that probability now. Now, we want the probability that we get someone greater than her. And so to do that, we can use the rule of the complement. And what that says is, well, if you only have the probability of one event, so for example, we have the probability of getting someone less than Sakari, and we know that the total probability out there is one, then we can find the probability of everything else, so that, for example, the shaded in region that we have over here in our curve, we can find that just by subtracting off the probability that we do have from one. <clears throat> so this probability that we are greater than negative 2.986, well that's just 1 minus the probability that we are less than negative 2.986. And so in that way we're still able to use the probability table, which only has those left tail probabilities, to find right tail or greater than probabilities. So to complete this, this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.0014 or 0 0.9986. So that's how you use a probability table in a very kind of rudimentary sense. But what if you want to do these in jump? What if you have the software available to you? So let's go back up to our previous problem. Here we were asking about what's the probability of finding someone with it uh, who weighs less, a female husky who weighs less than Sakari. That's the same thing we said of finding someone with a z-score lower than negative 2.986. So if we go to jump and we open the distribution calculator, we see that we can choose the normal distribution with a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. So that by definition is the standard normal or z distribution. And we have two options over here. We can input values and calculate probability, or we can input probability and calculate values. Well here, because we want to find the probability that we get someone who weighs less than Sakari, that's what we're actually interested in. So down here under calculations, we have a few options. We have x less than or equal to q, x greater than q, q1 less than x less than q2, x less than q1, or x greater than q2. So you can see these are all ranges, and we have to have ranges for the normal distribution. Because again, the probability we take on a specific value for a continuous distribution is zero. And since we're finding the probability that we have someone less than Sakari, we're going to keep this first option selected. So these terms are the values that would go in the probability statement. We want the probability that random variable is less than a value. And the value that we are interested in is negative 2.986. So you hit enter, and the probability appears right here. So the probability equals 0 0.0014, and that is exactly the same probability that we had identified before. If we want to find the probability that we get someone who weighs more than Sakari, we would pick this next option. So to answer that second question, 
for z greater than negative 2.986, well, that term in the middle, random variable greater than a specific quantity, we would select that next term. We would keep it at negative 2.986 here, and we can see that the probability is 0.9986, and that is the answer that we got. And again, we can see here in this plot that this plot is shading in the curve the same way our original drawings shaded in the curve. So if we look at that second answer that we had, we shaded in everything to the right, so we had the vast majority of our normal curve shaded in, in the same way that this plot has the vast majority of the normal curve shaded in. So this is a good way to kind of, again, make sure that you're actually asking Jump to find the same thing that you would conceptually figure it out.